Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Justin and welcome to your virtual tour of the Lake Erie Nature and Science Center. We were founded in 1945 uh, in the home of Alberta Fleming, our founder, which makes 2020 our 75th anniversary. In 1960, we built part of our current building on the Cleveland Metro Parks Huntington Reservation, beginning our partnership with them. However, we are not part of the Metro Parks, we just have a partnership and reside on their land. Um, let's, let's take our tour inside. Here we are standing outside of 75 years of hard work and dedication where our mission con con continues to be educate and inspire each of us to understand, appreciate, and take responsibility for the natural world. First stop on our virtual tour is the lobby. From here you have three choices. You can head towards the planetarium, you can head towards our outside exhibits, or you can go towards our inside exhibits. Let's go to the planetarium first. The planetarium was built in 1968. Uh, in 1998, it was connected to the rest of the center during some major renovations, which added preschool classrooms and more exhibit space. On the way to the planetarium, don't forget to stop and say hi to the turtles. They're everyone's favorite. All right, let's head inside. To get to the planetarium, you have to walk through everyone's favorite dark hallway. Here in the planetarium, we're joined by Miss Katie, our planetarium specialist, who's going to give us a little more information about the planetarium. Hi, Miss Katie. Hi there. Welcome to the planetarium. The planetarium was built in 1968 by a group of school leaders and community members. In 1998, the planetarium was added to the Lake Erie Nature and Science Center with um, the major renovations that added the lobby, the hallway, and preschool classrooms, and some more exhibit space. Our planetarium was completely renovated down to the brick walls in 2014. In 2014, we upgraded our traditional star ball, uh, and then we also added a digital star projector. For being a 30-foot dome and having two different star projectors, we're one of a kind here in the United States. There might be a few others, but we are open to the public seven days a week with programming for families and children almost every day of the week. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> now that we've been to the planetarium, let's go check out our outdoor exhibits. On your left, we have the pond, which is a crowd favorite. And the other animals out here are native animals who do live out here all year round. Our first stop is the log cabin. The log cabin is one of our three preschool classrooms that was added in 1998. Let's go check out some of our favorite animals. All right, I'm standing here in front of the aviary where we have a bunch of native birds. All the animals you see at, here at the Nature Center are permanent residents. They cannot be released to the wild due to injuries or other circumstances. I'm standing here in front of, well, one of my favorite animals, the American crow. But my all-time favorite animal, is right here, the red-tailed hawk. Now, like I said, all the animals here are here due to injuries. Um, one of our red-tailed hawks is here due to a detached retina. So hawks have amazing eyesight. They can see prey up to a mile away very clearly, but uh, with only one working eye, her hunting abilities are not very good. So that's why she's here with us. She gets fed every day like a queen, and she has a great life here with another red-tailed hawk there. Now we're gonna head this direction on your left. We see our resident turkey vulture, again here due to some sort of injury. He's about 10 years old. He's been here for almost 10 years too. And if you look here on your right, we have another exhibit. So all the animals we just saw are permanent residents. This exhibit here is dedicated to our rehab animals. We have an animal rehabilitator here that takes care of injured animals that the public may bring to us. Um, this specific exhibit here is uh, two, or one flight cage and one usually used for mammals. Um, we're trying to give you a good view, but the glass has special covering in front of it so the birds inside can't see the people outside, but you're able to look inside and see the birds that are here. Um, currently it looks like we don't have much in there right now, and hopefully we'll get an inside view of the cages a little bit later. But let's keep walking. Over here we have a resident peregrine falcon. Again, has an injury um, on her left wing. She's not able to fly, so that's why she's here with us. One of the coolest birds. 
Also the fastest animal here on planet Earth. Another one of the fan favorites is the bald eagle. He likes to make noises at me and faces like that. That's his way of saying, this is my territory, stay out of it. But he's a super cool, majestic bird. We love him. Over here we have some more native uh, plants. We call it our pollinator garden. It's very helpful for butterflies and bees of the area. And on the left we have our red fox, who smells really bad, but that's a defense mechanism for their own good. It's daytime, so he's sleeping down there. We woke him up. Hanging out in the shade. In the back we have our wild turkeys. They might make some noises for us if they see us. That is one of our males. The other ones are... Oh, there he is. <laughs> the other ones are behind the building off to the right or hanging out in the shade inside the barn. And last but not least are some of our resident rabbits. There are two outside, the other two are inside. Very cool. They're very friendly. All right, let's head back inside. All right. Now that we're back inside, let's head towards our indoor exhibits. Over here we have some of our beehives. Uh, this one is inside, it's just a model, it doesn't have any actual bees inside of it. But out here, right now there's one hive, but we do have multiple hives across our property, cared for by an on-staff beekeeper. When the, when the hive is successful enough, we do sell honey occasionally. That doesn't happen every year, but it's a real treat when it does. We have mostly aquarium exhibits. Uh, first up, we have our venomous snakes. The timber rattlesnake is very cool. Looks like he just shed. Right. After the venomous snakes, you come across our string habitat. Recently renovated, houses many native fish, and also a northern green frog. He's usually hanging out up on the rocks. Sometimes he goes in the water. Our pond habitat is another fan favorite. The turtles like to stack on top of each other. They think it's hilarious. We also have, so we got painted turtles and we have two eastern spiny soft shell turtles. One of them is male, the other is female. The larger one is the female, and the smaller one is the male. Next up, we have our Eastern Hellbender exhibit. So he's very difficult to find. Sometimes he camouflages, uh, he's very good camouflage and blends in with the bottom of the tank very well. I think that's his tail we're looking at right now. He is America's largest salamander and Ohio's largest amphibian. Uh, they breathe through their skin, so they're a very good indicator of water quality. They need very clean water to survive. So they're super cool. Around the corner we've got a Lake Erie habitat with plenty of native fish. Usually they get to be pretty large. We also have some sunfish, which are super cool. Very common, very common fish. And also a musk turtle. There he is trying to climb the back of the enclosure. They are aquatic turtles, but they're very heavy, so they spend a lot of time at the bottom. Next up we have an opossum exhibit, the Virginia opossum. She's not usually out, but I don't know, she's not feeling lazy today. She's out exploring. Looks like she just ate her breakfast. Breakfast and lunch, I guess. She's super cool. And then on your left we have multiple rat snakes. The, or the gray rat snake and the eastern fox snake. Looks like the fox snake is chilling in the water today, taking a bath, and the other snake is under one of the logs. Looks like they also recently shed. 
And another favorite is the cockroach exhibit, the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. We have plenty of cockroaches. This exhibit was also remodeled recently to make it better for them. Up top, we have the long-nosed gar. There are two of them. They're really beautiful fish, I love them. And last but not least, we have the invasive species tank. These are all species that are invasive, which means they're not supposed to be here, but someone has released them into the wild and they've thrived and started a population of their own. So that includes goldfish, koi, and carp, which is super cool. Now that we've seen all the indoor exhibits, let's go check out our annual rehab facility. Remember that rehab enclosure we saw outside? Now we're going to take a look at it through the staff entrance. It's a tight fit in there, so here, let me take you. All right, so here's one of two enclosures out here. These are large, large rehab enclosures that are outdoors that allow animals to get natural sunlight and lots of space to run around and do what they'd normally be doing. And this one usually is used for large mammals such as rabbits and possums, so they have plenty of space to dig and burrow and do whatever else they do. And this one normally has songbirds or other types of birds in it, so let's take a look. So here we're looking at three baby gulls. They've got food and water up here in the front. Looks like they got some fish today. They like to hang out right in the front of the cage, so that's why we couldn't see them from outside. Super cute. All right, let's head back inside. The last stop on our virtual tour is the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center down here in the basement. Now, it's not normally open to the public, but since it's a virtual tour, we're gonna get a special behind the scenes look of how we help wild animals. I've spent plenty of time working and volunteering down here, and I think it's super cool. So without further ado, let's go inside. Joining us down here in the basement today is Miss Christine, one of our wildlife rehabilitation specialists. So Miss Christine, what can you tell us about wildlife rehab? Well, wildlife rehab is when an animal is injured or sick um, and it needs help in order to survive in the wild. Now, right now it's spring, well, the beginning of summer, and there's a lot of babies. So all of those ducks and geese and a lot of other animals have been having babies lately. And since we're right close to Lake Erie, we are specializing in all of those waterfowl. Now, I think you guys already got to see some of the herring gulls upstairs. And we have some that have just come in. They're really, really tiny. We're gonna take a quick peek at these little guys. we get in here in rehab we get a lot of Canada geese so if you guys come on over here we're gonna see some little baby Canada geese now the big problem with geese is that they imprint on people really quickly they come to rely on people and want to be close to them so when they're really really little if you find a baby goose all by itself you want to take it to a rehabber immediately so that it doesn't get a chance to imprint on you now these guys here are big enough that I could foster them with a whole different goose family. The problem is they are imprinted on humans, so they want to be around people and not around other geese. So we're going to spend time making them a little bit afraid of people and making sure that they're not running up and trying to approach people. Now, as the geese get older, breaking that imprint can get a lot harder. The longer somebody keeps a goose at their house, the more that goose wants to be around people and it makes it much, much harder. So with our older geese, we've actually added a decoy so that the geese get used to being around adult geese and hopefully with them being around adult geese and uh, being a little bit scared away from humans, when we take these guys and foster them out with other geese that are the same age, what we wanna do is open that cage and have them run to the adult geese and not run towards the humans. That's exactly the best way. Uh, that way we know that as adults, those geese aren't gonna be approaching people because an adult goose is pretty big and sometimes can be a little bit scary for humans. So we wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. 
speaking uh, uh, speaking of adult geese, we actually got in an adult goose, and when she came in, she couldn't even stand. So we spent a lot of time making sure that she had the right kind of nutrients. Uh, we gave her a little bit of medication to help her out. And now she went from not being able to stand up on her own to being able to use her own two legs. As you can see, she's really bright and alert and she's even given us a little bit of a hiss to try and scare us away. So she's doing much, much better. And we definitely hope to be able to release her in the future. Pretty cool. All right, we've seen gulls, we've seen geese, and now it's time to see the number one animal. We get more of these than any other animal every single year. So we're gonna take a peek over here and see if you can figure out what they are before I tell you. Wow, look at all those little babies. Those are baby ducks. And in fact, those are baby mallard ducks. Now, that's a lot of babies. And you might see a mom with that many, but that's probably two different baby uh, groups. In fact, these babies came to us at three different times. They just happened to be the same size, so we were able to put them together into one group. We wouldn't want to mix different sizes um, just because what's appropriate for babies isn't appropriate for the next level up, kind of like you wouldn't put a kindergartner into fifth grade. They need to be able to grow and get bigger over time, and they can do that in a group with other ducks that are the same size as them. But I do have ducks that are quite a bit bigger. All right, so we're gonna go back into one of the larger cages, and if we take a slow peek over the top, we might catch them playing in there. Now when we look in here, oh, they're just barely out. We can see that there's a nice little heat lamp that helps to keep them warm. So even though they're much larger than the ones we just saw, they're still too small to be without mom. And that's why they're still here at the nature center. Ducks, unlike geese, will not foster other babies. So they have to stay with us until they are big enough to be released into the wild. And we have some that are almost ready for release. So we're gonna go up and take a look at that area right now. We are back outside in the wildlife garden with Miss Christine and she's gonna show us the pre-release rehab enclosures. Excellent, now these enclosures are great since they're outside, the animals are getting natural sunlight. They're also feeling the natural temperature changes and really helps to get them ready to be released back into the wild. Now we're gonna go really slow and really quiet if we're lucky they won't notice us. And when they do, you'll see them all jump right into the water. Now that reaction that you just saw of them all running away from us, that's exactly what you want to see. You want them to run, and get into the water and get away from humans. This means they're also gonna get away from dogs and other predators. Now you'll notice that they've got all of their feathers, they're waterproof because sitting in that water, they're not getting wet at all. And in just a little while, we're gonna put bands on every single one of these ducks so that if anyone ever finds that duck again, they can actually report where they saw that duck and we'll know how long that duck has lived or even how far away that duck has moved to. So these guys are almost ready to be released back into the wild. Here we go. Thank you for joining our virtual tour of the Lake Erie Nature and Science Center. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about na native wildlife. And we hope you come visit us soon. Bye.